Welcome to 72 hours in Krakow, Krakow, Poland. We jetted off for the bank holiday weekend from Gatwick Airport arriving in Krakow late at night to the airport and got a taxi to our Airbnb. All the prices are here for the taxi so you know what to expect when they charge you. Our Airbnb was tucked away, very hard to find in the middle of the night, but luckily we got in okay. Our instructions were really, really good. And we had everything that we needed in our little Airbnb. So here's a quick tour. We have the kitchen, which wasn't used, but ideal if you are staying for a longer period of time. Also a little table if you want to eat here. And then into the bathroom, which has all your basic needs, but very, very lovely and very, very clean. As a washer dryer if you are staying for a longer period of time and want to wash your clothes but like I said it's very very clean it didn't really have anything in terms of food or drinks like any milk or anything but you could go buy that yourself it's fine and then the bedroom like I said just very cozy very homely vibes and bed sofa and it even had a flat screen TV which was a lovely little addition Then it was off for our first day in Krakow in the morning. This is the front of our Airbnb. So this, yeah, is very tucked away in a little courtyard off the main street in Krakow. So like I said, quite hard to find in the middle of the night. And then it was off to breakfast. We headed to Bread and Butter, which was highly recommended and only about a 10 minute walk away from our Airbnb. We had to queue for a little while as it was busy, which is always a good sign. And we grabbed some coffees while we waited. And then we both had some avocado on toast with some smoked salmon and then some pancakes for dessert just to have a little sweet with our savoury. And then we headed into the main city centre and walked our way around the city. We made our way to Krakow Market Square, so a lot of tourists around here, a lot of things to see, a lot of people selling different things, a uh, really, really nice area and lovely architecture, a lot of horses and carts around the area. This is St Mary's Basilica, definitely go in here, I would totally recommend, it's a gorgeous little place. The Cloth Hall has a lot of different market stalls, really, really nice to see, but yeah, very busy area, very touristy and uh, just nice to have a little wander around and people watch as well. headed up to the castle it started to absolutely lash down with rain so we didn't walk around too much you could buy tickets to go into some of the different venues but we didn't really fancy it and we had a nice walk around the big grounds before heading to find some pierogies himself absolutely adores pierogies so this was a main highlight of the trip we had to come here which had a lot of good reviews a lot of highly rated reviews on TripAdvisor so we knew we were in a good spot I went for the beef pierogies and himself went for the cheese and potato pierogies. After having some in Veselka, did they match up? I thought they were better. Polish pierogies are a lot better than Veselka's, I must say. And this is a little outdoor market area in Plak Nowy. This stall here is very famous for its baguettes, so I totally recommend. We were still full from our pierogies, so we didn't have any, but would totally recommend coming here if you are hungry and looking some good outdoor food. Then we went to the Jewish Quarter, which was really, really nice to see. Quite poignant to walk around here and know the history of the area. We popped into an old synagogue, which used to be a synagogue, but is now like a bookstore. Really nice, gorgeous place. Loads of books on display. Really, really wide variety of Polish history, Jewish history. I did pick up a book, which you'll see later on, but really, really nice to come in here and have a wander around.
Then we headed to the Ghetto Heroes Square to remember those that did go to the death camps in Auschwitz and left behind all their furniture. And the square was said to have a lot of chairs left behind. This is to remember them. And this amazing church, St. Joseph's Church, it is huge, so it's something definitely to come and see. We popped into another bookstore, love a bookstore, and then headed across Father Bernatek's bridge with loads of sculptures, locks, really nice views of Krakow as well. Nice evening walk into the city. to an Irish pub to watch some football before heading off to dinner and this is the square at night time at sunset so gorgeous and we came to Mamma Mia an Italian restaurant that had been highly recommended and rated on TikTok and it did not disappoint I had pasta and salmon himself had some carbonara and it was so good then on to day two just a word of warning we left very early to go to Auschwitz and visit the museum there both camps so this is what the next section of the video is going to be so we came to the first camp and we were guided around by a Polish lady who had family that were here that had a lot of personal stories to tell us. Definitely recommend having a personal tour guide around the area. It is very somber, obviously. It's very, very sad. I didn't take that much footage, but I wanted to show you what it does look like um, if you never get the chance to go and walk you through it. But these are all the camps and the places that the Polish people and the Jewish people did live. They brought furniture, they brought pots and pans, thinking that they were going somewhere nice to be relocated. These are all the shoes that are left behind. The amount is just astonishing. It is honestly staggering. It, it is one of those places that you do have to just to go and see it all in person, just kind of takes your breath away that this actually did happen, this level of atrocity did happen. And then we headed over to the Birkenau camp then that was more, it was a lot bigger uh, outdoors, so do wear appropriate footwear, but they have a nice memorial here for in, in all languages around the world and it, a lot worse conditions, I would say, than the previous camp, but each camp had its own horrific atrocities and you got to see kind of the journey of what someone would have went through when they were here and there are a lot of books available if you want to read more and learn more about World War II and the concentration camps. And we headed back to the city but it was quite hard to be upbeat in the evening I would say. I had also got some bad news while we were in Auschwitz which kind of damp dampened it even more if that was even possible but we came to get a little snack just to kind of bring us back into the normal life again which was like I said a bit hard to do. Then we grabbed some more coffee just to walk around the city and we weren't really up for doing much that evening because it had been a very somber day but we grabbed some coffee went for another walk headed back up to the castle. What's this? Castle. Takeshi's? Takeshi's castle yeah yeah. <laughs> and seen the flame-throwing dragon. And then it was very much an evening for very homely, scrumptious food. So we went to this traditional Polish cafe and we had some soup in bread buckets, which so traditional, it was so lovely. And we also had some pierogies, obviously, but yeah. Very, very hearty, very, very wholesome. That is just what we needed to end the day because it had been a day to say the least. And there is my new. And then it was our checkout day. So we were heading out and we grabbed some more coffee from a Swedish bakery this time and just got some coffee for the walk. They had a lovely Swedish pastries if you're ever in the mood for one of those when you're in Krakow, I totally recommend. And we headed around the city on our way to breakfast at Mac, which is, I believe, a hotel and had a really, really good working area. A lot of people working as it was on Monday. Uh, we had a cinnamon roll, which was stunning, and then both had shakshuka, which was gorgeous. And some more coffee from Emigrant Coffee, which was highly recommended place. Then back up to the castle for a third time. And we finally had a good walk around here with some good weather and took in all the sights. And then it was time to head to the airport where they were very technology advanced with their robots. And then we seen a lot of fighter planes on the runway while we were jetting off, but then it was back to London. 
If you have any questions about Crack Off, do leave any questions in the below comments. I will get back to you. Like I said, there's a lot to do in Crack Off, but not too much to do in Crack Off. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Bye.